Every year after Hollywood's supply of explosions runs out at the end of the summer, audiences get to relax by watching smaller, more realistic movies based on real people, like Sully and Machete. These true stories tend to be inspiring tales meant to uplift the human soul, and hopefully score an Oscar nomination or ten. However, as we've pointed out before, if these movies showed you what happened after the last scene, many of them would go from uplifting to sadomasochistic. Real people don't simply stop existing after the credits roll, but when you find out what they did next, you'll probably wish they had. Before Jamie Foxx was shooting Innocence to establish himself as the alpha crazy in Baby Driver, he was shooting heroin as Ray Charles in the biopic Ray. The movie ends when Charles finally kicks his drug addiction, as poetically represented in a touching scene where the ghost of his mother makes him promise, you'll never let nobody or nothing turn you into no cripple ever again. And then, even though he was a womanizing devil throughout the entire film, the renewed Charles is welcomed back into the open arms of his one true love, his wife Della Robinson. In the last scene, the two kiss during an official Ray Charles' is awesome ceremony in the 70s, surrounded by their three happy children. Absent from that scene, Charles' six to nine additional kids, because yeah, apparently, he lost count somewhere along the way, with up to eight other mothers. His complete inability to keep it in his pants eventually led Della to get fed up with all the cheating and procreating, and she took him to court in 1976. Charles didn't let a nasty divorce proceeding sour him on the joys of hooking up with ladies, so he did that again, and again, and again, and again, and again. As for getting clean, Charles did kick his heroin addiction, only to immediately replace it with a different one. He started drinking massive quantities of liquor for breakfast with a side of marijuana for dinner every day because it was what kept him going. Yep. That's an addict. Even the man himself admitted that he had successfully drank himself to death when, shortly after being diagnosed with alcoholic liver disease, he said, if I knew I was going to live this long, I would have taken better care of myself. Good idea. His liver self-destructed in 2004, taking the rest of him with it. Presumably, he's still being scolded by his ghost mom in the afterlife for lying to her about that whole staying clean thing. The musical Chicago is based on the real-life stories of 1920s murderesses Beulah Annan and Belva Gardner. While there are no records of the two teaming up for a two-woman show in real life, and we're guessing they didn't do a whole lot of dancing in prison either, the general details of the story are the same. Annan was arrested for shooting her lover, became a media sensation during her trial, and ultimately got off by claiming that the gun basically shot itself during a struggle, just like Roxy Hart in the 2002 movie version, without a jazz band following her around and accompanying every other sentence. The musical ends when the two deadly but lovable ladies are released from prison and finally find the fame they've been looking for all along. Yay for murder! Being released from prison was a death sentence to Annan, but don't feel too bad for her. She proved to be an awful human being. And we're not just talking about the shooting her lover thing. In the film, it's implied that Roxy's loyal to a fault husband, John C. Riley, will finally walk out on her upon her release after one indignity too many. In real life, Annan's husband, Albert, who paid for her attorneys during the trials, nearly bankrupting himself in the process, dutifully stuck by her, but instead of repaying him with a year's worth of special birthday sex... <laughs> Annan announced to the press that she was going to divorce him on the very same day she was acquitted. Her reason? He is too slow. With her dull husband no longer slowing her down, Annan married a boxer, which was the marrying a basketball player of the Prohibition era. She probably figured it would be all jazz parties and moonshine after that, but the relationship ended just three months later, after she discovered that the guy was already married. Still believing her bad luck with men would evaporate if she got with enough of them, Annan married two more times before being institutionalized for having a mental breakdown. It was there that she died from tuberculosis, just four years after being released from prison. At least this assures that Hollywood will never do a sequel to Chicago, because that would be the most depressing musical ever. Just a bunch of dead jazz singers and crying John C. Riley. Conviction is the inspiring true-life story of Kenny Waters, a man sentenced to life in prison for a murder he didn't commit, and his sister, Betty Ann, who promised to get him out. How do we know it's inspiring? Because check out the music in the damn trailer. <laughs> That's a movie where you know you're gonna leave the cinema smiling like a moron, with a renewed faith in mankind. The movie shows how Betty Ann, a single mother working as a waitress, put herself through law school, spent 18 years trying to clear her brother's name, and finally succeeded. She was so convinced her brother was innocent that, using previously overlooked DNA evidence, she managed to overturn his convic- Oh, I just got the name of the movie. Because he was a convict. The movie ends with Kenny, a free man, and text letting us know that, years later, the city of Ayer formally apologized to the Waters family by way of three million dollars, Woo money. One night he decided to pay his brother a visit. Because prison had already robbed enough of his time, Waters did not feel like walking the long way to his brother's house, so he took a shortcut instead. And by shortcut, we mean he tried to scale a 15-foot wall. He slipped, fell down the wall, and that's as much detail as you're gonna get from a comedy website. His sister hasn't taken a case since. The studio even did some screenings with the crawl. Tragically, Kenny Waters died six months after release from prison at the end, but test audiences were put off by it. To be fair, we'd feel the same way if at the end of Star Wars they put up text saying, The Empire killed everyone 15 minutes after the ceremony. Chewie was a spy, but also died later due to alcoholism. Akbar was a racist. The end. The sleazy part is that they didn't even allow a simple for Kenny at the end because it would raise too many questions. And this is a feel-good movie, damn it! It's supposed to make you cry, not think. 
Hey everybody, thanks for watching that video. If you want to subscribe to our channel, click the big C in the middle, and to get notifications, hit the notification bell icon, and they'll send you notifications about that. Now, let's rock this joint!